Hi, and welcome to some game analysis with me, uh, Ginger GM. And I'm going to show you in this video one of the most amazing sequences I've ever seen in any chess game. And I kind of stumbled across this quite recently, and I thought, well, I've just got to share this because sometimes chess is just a piece of art. You know, it can be a lot of things at different times, it can be a sport. It can be a competition, it can be a science, but sometimes it's just so much beauty. And uh, I just want to, I just want to share this with you. This this beautiful, beautiful sequence here, and uh, I think it, it needs to be shared. Before I do that, I'm planning to stream uh, tonight just for two hours, just to test out my new setup. And uh, let me just give you the details of that if you're interested in watching. Um, so there's the details there. That is today. The 28th, which is, we'll say it Tuesday today, and I'll be doing it at 7 p.m. GMT, so a couple hours after this video goes out. Not a lot of time to, to get people interested, but hopefully some of you will come and join me. Um, I'll probably be playing a bit of Blitz, nothing, don't think anything too serious. If you have any uh, requirements or uh, requirements, if you have anything you'd like me to do, then please just, just let me know. So they're the details for that. But anyway, let's let's go back now to this thing. Do you like the little halo I've created around my head? I don't know if that's very appropriate. It's more like a burnt sun there than a halo. And I don't think I really deserve a halo around my head. But anyway, okay, so uh, this this now occurred in a game. And we're just going to dive in on move 23. And black played rook to c6. And it was a game between two players I haven't heard of. And here, white has been attacking throughout the game. And if we just have a look at the position it's clear white has some compensation for the exchange because the black king and rook are very badly positioned there and it looks quite dangerous, but rook c6 is a really annoying move. And here white came up with one of the most outstanding pieces of genius in chess I've ever seen. Rather than retreating the queen when black could take on e6 because he has two things attacking that pawn, he came up with another idea. Queen takes e5. And now, well, black has to take the queen. And what is the reason, the point behind this crazy idea? Well, let's see if you can play along. What is white's idea here? And remember, if you need to spend a bit more time at any point in this video, just pause and try to catch up because it is quite hard at moments. Well, the idea is rook to f1. And we, now we get this fascinating position. And I do implore you guys at home to do what I did and check this position with a computer engine. Now, I've tried it with Komodo, I've tried it with Fritz, and all these engines say that black is completely winning here when you put it on to start with, and even if you let it run for a while. But I'm of the opinion, this is the only, one of the only times I differ with a computer, that it's either a win for white or somehow black might be able to draw, but I haven't found that draw yet. And I could literally spend half a day analysing this position. It's a fascinating position. And this is one of those sacrifices which is a prophylactic sacrifice because you're trying to restrict, suffocate your opponent's ideas. Because let's have a look at what black can do. Normally when you sacrifice, you look at your own ideas. But here, the whole point of this beautiful concept is to stop black's ideas. Black can't move the rook on h8. Black can't move the king on g8. Black's queen here can't move anywhere away from the f8 square, because if it does, it allows rook to f8 checkmate. So those pieces are kind of dead. The black rook on c6 can move, but nowhere really good, as we're going to see. So this is uh, it's a brilliant concept. But is it winning for white? Because black can't move. But how does white improve the position? In actual fact, let's just say this rook here is much stronger than the queen. It's bizarre. You don't want to play a move like rook to f7 because that would allow black to sacrifice the queen. So what can black play here? And I've looked at many lines, but I can't find the right idea for black or an idea to draw. To start with, what happens if he takes the pawn? Let's look at the obvious moves. Well, if queen takes, rook to f8 is checkmate, demonstrating why the queen is tied down. If rook takes e6, what do you play here? Pause the video if you need to. Black is winning. Sorry, black is losing. It's checkmating three moves with bishop to c4. And now black can't move anything, pretty much. The rooks can't move. 
And it's completely, you're completely tied up here with Black. Just try to put yourself in Black's position throughout this video. And whatever happens next, White's going to go Bishop takes Rook and Rook to F8 checkmate. So Black can't really do anything here. So let's just take a possible move. Let's have a look at Rook to C8. Now this looks like a, a good way to try to cover the F8 square so that Black's Queen can either take on e6 or move somewhere get it get active now this is a key moment and white needs to improve his position this is all about restricting and improving this puzzle and this is something you should do in all your games restrict your opponent's pieces improve your own pieces now try to find a move which of your pieces can improve its position pause the video if you need to and try to think of an idea it's a beautiful idea well, the bishop on h6 is perfect. It's entombing black's position and covering f8. Don't move that piece. The rook on f1, fantastic. This rook is controlling so many squares, threatening rook f8. As I said before, a move like rook to f7 would actually be a big error because your rook is stronger than the queen in this situation. And after queen takes f7, you allow black out of the tomb. And now Black's winning because he has two rooks versus two bishops. And you've allowed him freedom. I will have my freedom. So don't allow him freedom. So what should you do instead of this? Well, the amazing idea here is all to do with the other bishop. This bishop is not good. So you need to bring this into the game. What diagonal should you get it on? It's clear to me this bishop should be on this diagonal towards the king on g8. How do you get it to that diagonal? Think how you maneuver it there. You have time to play the unbelievable bishop to d1. A, a fantastic idea. This bishop is just trying to get to b3. If queen takes pawn, then we have bishop to b3. And still, black would lose the queen but still be in the blocks there. I think white would be winning. And it's clear here that black is not better. Even though the computer still says black's better here. Black can't do anything. This is what we need to think. And... Black is still helpless. He has no good plans. G5 doesn't help him. What's he doing next? Any pawn moves don't help him. He can only move his rook. So Black decided in the game to play rook to C4 in order to try and exchange the rook for this bishop, thinking that would make life easier. But does it? No, it doesn't. Bishop to B3. And now, well, if the black rook moves at all, then it should be easy to see that white's winning here because he's transferred a piece to a better square. And by playing, well, there's two ways to win. There's a very beautiful way and the, I would say, reasonably simple way of opening up the bishop, e7 check, and next move it's going to be checkmate. I'll let you guys work out why on the next move it's going to be checkmate. Remember, do pause at any moment. This is quite a difficult one, but it's so beautiful. So instead, after rook to c4, Bishop to b3, black decided b5, and just keep things solid. But now white came up with a, a fantastic idea. He took on c4, quite natural, and I think white is now winning because his rook and bishop are stronger than the queen and rook. And again, we've got rid here of black's one active piece, which is his rook. So just think about your opponent. This what this video is trying to do, is trying to get into um the mind of the opponent try to get into the mind of of the opponent and stop him doing what he wants to do this is the key thing for this this lesson and what he what he wants to do here is try to activate his queen but he can never get away from f8 again if the queen tries to activate anywhere there's always going to be rook to f8 checkmate so how do we now win we realize that black's paralyzed and what we do here is we try to use our pawn majority. We have three pawns against two pawns. So white simply played b3, trying to create a pass pawn on that area of the board because he has the other area of the board completely controlled, even though he's a queen down. Unbelievable. So now black tried a5 and white creates a pass pawn. Black can only move his queen and his pawn. g5 doesn't help him. In actual fact, that gives away the f5 square and I just move my rook into f5, threatening another checkmate there. So that's even worse. So now black played queen to e7. He has to keep control of the f8 square. 
And I love the way white plays this. White, again, thinks, what is Black trying to do? And there's no rush. I'm going to torture him. Well, Black is trying to maybe come in with a check. So what does White do? He just plays King G2. He has the time. He wants to run Black out of moves. Black moves his queen to A3. What does Black want to do? He wants to come in with a check. So what does White do? He simply stops the checks. He moves his rook. He's always thinking about his opponent's plan, not his own. And this is a winning strategy here. It's very unique. Normally in chess, you think about your own ideas to win the game. But here, it's stopping your opponent while slowly improving your position. The black queen has to cover f8. So he has to keep it on this square. So, you know, if he tried to go queen takes c3, rook to f8 is checkmate. This is the point. So queen to e7 was played. And this is the only moment where I'm going to criticize white's play a little bit. Here there is a beautiful win. You have this pass pawn. And here it's you're going to have to do something at some point. You can't just keep dancing about. You have to do something at some point. And white could now have played. He, he took the mickey, as we say in England, by just going rook f1. He said, I'm boss. I'm going to take my time, which won very nicely because it induced a mistake from the opponent. This is a good technique. If you're in control, just mess about. Let your opponent get frustrated and make a mistake. But a beautiful win here would have been c5. And black would have been helpless against this. Because the point is, this pawn is going to try to run all the way to c8. And if the black queen takes it, you will distract the black queen to a worse square. Now, the key thing here is queen takes c5. But now the queen has lost control of the f7 square. And the point is that the white rook can now come into f7. And there's a couple of things to note here. The black queen has no checks because you've played king to g2. What is white's threat here? White's threat is to go rook g7 check, forcing king g8. And then a discovered check. So let's say, for example, black play queen takes c3. Well, rook to f8 checkmate, so we can count that one out. What about black plays a4, keeping his queen on f8? Well, now we do rook to g7 check, king f8 only move, rook to c7, discovered check, and we win the queen and we win the game. So the only possibility here is for black to try to hide his queen behind his pawn. Because now, if we go rook to g7 check and we go rook to a7 check, we're not winning the queen. But following our, our philosophy, there's a beautiful idea here. We run black out of moves. The black queen is trying to come into our position with check, but he's running out of moves. So what do we do here? Can you work it out? Pause the video now if you need to. We play king to h1. Beautiful. The king, again, avoids any checks because... In this position, if the black queen does the only check it can, we win the queen. There's no other way for the black queen in. If the black queen tries to sneak in, let's say to b2, you lose control of f8, rook to f8, checkmate. So what can black do here? He's simply running out of ideas. He can only push his pawn. Because again, if his queen comes into the open, let's say queen d6, we can do check. And now we do discovered check, we win the queen. So we can only go a4. And now do you have do you have the gist of this? Please do work out what is white's best move here. You're trying to put black in Zugzwang eventually. How can you do that here? I love the move here, h3. Because this move forces black now to either move the g-pawn or move the queen. Now we know what happens if, if, if black moves the queen. You either checkmate on f8 or you do the yo-yo and you win the queen. If he moves the g-pawn, what can we do now? We can play a number of ideas, but I like the idea of rook to f5 threatening two checkmates and black is going to run out of moves. He can only go queen e7 stopping checkmates, but here we just lose time. a3. And black is going to be in Zugzwang eventually. You're going to win the game. It's beautiful. I just think it's so artistic, this win. I really, really think it's beautiful. And I love the way that here you can play this move. Let's go back to c5. So in this position, c5. Now, what happens after c5 if black doesn't take the pawn? Well, let's say he goes a4. Now it's even easier. We go c6. Remember, if he ever takes on e6, checkmate. 
And if he goes something like a3, we go c7. Now he has to stop us from queening, so he has to play queen e8. Only way to cover this and cover that. But now what do we do here? Well, here we can play e7. And eventually there's too many threats. Rook f8 check. Big check is the main threat. There's nothing black can do. If he takes the pawn, we queen our c pawn. It's just so beautiful how black is paralyzed even though he's queening a rook up. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Now let me show you the end of the game. The end of the game went rook to f1. And here black played g5. White has induced this mistake. This is a mistake because now rook to f5. And we get to the position we just looked at. There's another threat here of rook takes g5. g4 was played. Now remember here your rook is stronger than the queen. So you don't want to go rook g5 check. Because even though you win the queen you lose the game. Because you let the black king out. King g7. You're worse here. You'll probably lose. So what you do here. Well, instead of this, you try to run black out of moose. And here, c5. Because now, if queen takes c5, we have rook g5 checkmate. And black can only move his queen to a couple of squares. Queen d8, c6, bishop covers a check on d2. And after queen e7, c7, queen e8. And now, instead of e7, which would have won, another beautiful win. White played c8, queen, and the point is, after queen takes queen, you can't cover g5. Rook g5 would be checkmate. Absolutely brilliant and amazing game. I just wanted to share that with you. I stumbled across that. I really enjoyed it. And uh, sometimes you just come across these beautiful ideas in chess. And you just want to try. And I just want to share my joy of that with you. Um, do you remember there's a stream tonight, uh, uh, let's say computer allowing, which I really hope so. And, you know, in the past it broke down. I'm trying to I'm trying to hope it's going to work today. And the stream is going to be in about two hours from when this video goes up. Um, I hope you can join me then. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, whoa, going back to the trippy stuff. Um, I'll see you all again, well, hopefully in the stream. Otherwise, I'll put the stream up on YouTube. Uh, I'll try to keep it clean this time. And not put any music in so it has to be taken down. Bye for now.